Hello everybody and welcome, as usual, to the lab. And in case you haven't noticed, in front of me today we are dealing with this little guy. The Commodore 64. Yes, a classic 8-bit computer from the 80s. And these days it can be assisted by modern technology. Because one of the downfalls of this system is of course trying to get programs on it. Many, most people from the UK will be familiar with the horror of this cassette deck, which is slow and unreliable. It can take 10 minutes to load an introduction screen, which is basically just graphics. And then it will say press fire and it will spend another 10 minutes loading the game, which is bloody irritating. Now, there was a solution to that in the 80s. Well, that works on these cassette tapes for those of you who are young and have not seen them before. Uh, there was a solution to this in the 80s, if I move this over slightly, you will see this thing, which is massive. This is a Commodore 1541 floppy drive. This particular example is poorly at the moment, so it's not working. But yes, this run on five and a half inch floppies uh, more popular in the American market than the British I mean, probably because of the cost and this, this cost uh, as much if not more than the computer itself and look at the size of it because it's basically a Commodore 64 inside as well uh, these are not that reliable and not that fast the third solution which was the best was cartridges, of which I have one here, Jupiter Lander. And you just plug them on in the back, switch it on, and off it goes straight away. No problem. But for the modern collector, unless you want to spend an absolute fortune collecting all these and have the space as well, there is a modern way of doing all this. And it's called the ST to IDE. And this is the first generation one. There is another one now that looks like a miniature version of that floppy drive. Basically, if you can see through the case there, all they've re done is redesigned the case and altered a few of the features. But other than that, it's basically the same thing. They've also changed some of this to make this more uh, durable. But what we do, this contains an SD card. On there goes all your software, your games, uh, slots in there, and then you use uh, menu based systems to select your game and run it. And with some software I'm going to show you, it runs very fast. So, first of all, let's go downstairs and show you how to set up the software. Then we'll come back up and show you how to set this up. Be right back. Right, first things first, you are going to need to plug your SD card into your laptop, PC, or wherever it is you use to transfer files from the internet. You're then going to have to go to this website, www.vic20.it. Don't worry about the fact it says VIC20, it's still got the software on it. And you're looking for the CBM, Commodore Business Machines, File Browser, versus Versus, version 1.5. Uh, if you get to this page, scroll down to the bottom, enjoy the screenshots if you want on the way down, but scroll down to the bottom and you'll see right at the bottom a little link. Click on that and it will download as a zip file. You're going to need some uh, zip software appropriate. Now, when you get in there, you'll see loads of files like this, fp.prg, fp16. Now what these are are versions of the file browser for different Commodore computers. You are looking for the Commodore 64 for FB64. Not the DTV version, the FB64 version. First thing to do is to remove <coughs> .prg off the end because the Commodore 64 will not like it if you don't do that. Next thing you need to do is bring up your SD card I've already done this, but you need to highlight that file and drag it across to your SD card. Now, the other file you're going to need is 
a file called sjload uh, names up on the screen this at the time of filming I cannot find on the internet because the sites that support it appear <coughs> to be down but <coughs> if you uh, type in download sjload and have a look if you can't find it gives a nod and I'll email it to you it's not a hassle and once you've got that file you also need to put that into the root directory there you can then acquire your ROMs from whatever source you do either you get them from the tape images you have disc, <coughs> disc images or wherever you then need to well you don't have to but you can make a directory to keep everything nice and tidy and put your games in there ideally they need to be D64 or PRG programs it will not like tape images they need to be transferred to these types first don't ask me how to do that I've not done it so once you've got them got all this done we need to extract this from the PC take it upstairs and we'll visit the Commodore 64 be right back. Right, in case you haven't noticed, there's a Commodore 64 with its back end facing us. How polite. But let's have a look at the hardware we're going to plug in it itself. This is the ST2 IDE, and your <coughs> SD card goes in a little slot there, clicks home. This is a 32 megabyte one, which will hold quite a bit of Commodore 64 software, but you can use 2 gigs, whatever you want, really. Uh, two buttons. That one is to reset the system. That one is if you've got a program that uses more than one disk, that will select the next next disk for you. And that is basically it for the case. Out of which you've got a cable, one of which goes to the uh, serial port, and the other one, which feeds off it, goes to the cassette port. And this is purely to get the 5 volt power out of it. So. There's the back of the 64 itself, and if I zoom in, I'll show you how to plug this thing in. Now make sure you've got the serial port, you can't really plug it into the video port because it's a different pin layout. But get the serial port and push around. This one, it has a tiny little knob in it so you can't get it the way around. But have a look, make sure you're putting it in the right way around, just to avoid damage to the computer and this little piece of hardware. And that's it, that's it plugged in. You can then turn it around. Got that there. Plug in the rest of your stuff. There we go. There's that one. And the power lead. Just slide it off the camera here a second. There we go. All plugged in. All set up. All ready to go. And if we press on, you'll see the lights come on on the drive as well. And within a few moments, they disappear. There we go. Now we can have a look at the screen. Ta -da. In fact, what I'll do before I do this is I'll quickly plug a joystick into the Commodore itself. Okay, we are all set up and are ready to go. So, how do we get stuff out of this? Well, first thing we do is type load, as you would in any classic load scenario for the Commodore 64, and quotation marks. Now, because we want to load this software via SJ load, we need to tell it to load through SJ load. So, you need the apostrophe, the star, then the name of the browser, which is FB64, which is the one we got for the web. Quotation mark, comma 8, which is the drive number, comma 1. Press return. And you will get uh, some gunk come up on the screen. That's because of how the compression works on SJ load. Don't worry about that. And once you get to this screen, just type run. And in a few seconds, up will come a menu. Now we've put all of our games into one screen there, so if we go to 64 games, it will open, and there's your list of game directories. So, uh, should you want, do -do 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 -do. Uh, let's have a look what we're going to play. We're going to play Boogie Boy. 
they just hit down hit down now uh, this one just has the buggy boy program but there might be other files in there so just go down and just see on the right hand side you say it's a CD slash R so you go down it'll switch to program so you know that, that is a program Duh. and just press return that might take a short while to work its magic but it is working you'll see lights flashing on the drive as it's going and that's just the initial screen and you can see it loading again it doesn't take too long we're doing this live so you can see how long it takes to do buggy boy which is actually one of the longer games it takes to do uh, <coughs> there we go and think press fire yes there we go there my friends is buggy bye all loaded up ready for you so if you want to play another game all you do turn the computer off give it 10 seconds switch it back on repeat and rinse and that my friends is how you need to do use an SD card as a storage solution for Commodore 64 and that speeds things up makes it nice and reliable and flexible because you can have lots of games on there and not loading continuously you know it's nice and quick so highly recommended to go on uh, eBay to have a look for them as I said at the time of recording they are about about 50 quid so highly recommended and thanks to uh, Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff, link below. Go and check his channel if you like repairing, watching people repair old stuff. He does Sinclair's, but we'll let him off for that. Thank you to him <coughs> for supplying this. Very kind. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you all. Very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>